Before we discuss further on Schubert's wonder fantasy, let us touch these questions. Is Schubert a classical or a romantic composer? Why is it important to ask such a questions? Our understanding of the composer will lead us in which directions we will interpret his music. It is not for the debate. I myself refrain from debating music. Everyone has his or her own choice. As for me, I like to make a responsible choice that I will satisfy myself. Including the premiere I made today, I have performed three times this wonder fantasy, and my understanding of Schubert grew significantly every time I explored deeply who Schubert was, and every revelation will always give me a thrilling awe. My understanding of Schubert is even now far closer to him compared to those days more than 15 years ago when I wrote my dissertations on his spontaneous and adventurous spirit. So let's start here. Schubert lived a very short life exactly in the transition years between the classical and the romantic periods. Beethoven was already 27 years old when Schubert was born in 1797. Beethoven spent his last 35 years in Vienna and Schubert was born in the same city. Then looking forward, Schubert was only 13 to 14 years older than Chopin, Schumann, and Liszt, few of the giants of the romantic era. But Chopin, Schumann, and Liszt was only 17 to 18 years old when Schubert died in 1828. Chopin, Schumann, and Liszt were not yet at their prime time as romantic composers by the time Schubert died. In music, the romantic period was not yet at its full bloom by the time Schubert died in 1828. Let's take an example. Chopin's first ballad, one of the signature pieces of the romantic period, came out later in 1835, seven years after Schubert died. The first conclusion here is that Schubert cannot be easily defined as a romantic composer. As we see here, when Schubert died, the romanticism in music has not yet came into maturity. Now let us see deeper to the connections between Schubert and Beethoven. There is a big controversy between these two giants when trying to answer, is Schubert a classical or a romantic composer? Beethoven's Opus 1, a set of three piano trios, was published and premiered in 1795. Two years before Schubert was born, Beethoven had launched his professional composing career. We need to wait about more than a decade before we see the writing of Schubert. Now let us see what came out of Beethoven when Schubert started composing around 1809 and 1810. Beethoven had written his Opus 78, Teresa, and Opus 81, Les Adieux, Piano Sonatas, around these years, 1809-1810, when Schubert started composing. It is also obvious that the classical period has started to fade away by the time Schubert started composing, as Beethoven had gone far leaving the classical traditions with these two sonatas. And therefore, here that conflicting question is originated from. But I will offer you a simple way to give a broad overview. This is my perspective in response to such questions that has raised many heated debates around it. For me, the truth is that Schubert underwent the same transitions as Beethoven did, from more of a classical composer toward more of a romantic composer. But both had gone separate ways. And before we discuss which ways of Schubert's, let me present first some factual proofs for this overview. Here is the first proof. At the beginning of Schubert's journey, he wrote in a very classical manner. His first a symphony from 1813 is even more classical than Beethoven's Symphony No. 1, written 15 years earlier. Another obvious proof is that Schubert's early piano sonatas are unmistakably classical in terms of their style. And if we measure the journey from Symphony No. 1 to Symphony No. 9 from both composers, we can see that the composing span of Schubert's was half the length of that of Beethoven's. Beethoven had 27 years from his first symphony to his ninth. And Schubert had only 15 years from his first symphony to his ninth symphony. Besides Schubert's first symphony, here is another proof that Schubert started very much as a classical composer. Let's see his piano sonatas from 1817. Very clearly classical in many ways. We may guess that it is a sonata by Haydn. Its aim is very classical, which is simplicity and clarity. And let's see Beethoven's sonatas from around the same time. The famous and spectacular Hammerklavier. It has gone far, leaving the classical traditions in many ways as well. The romantic idea of struggle and victory fills the music here. These color spectrums are just an approximate illustrations, not a precise representation. But it helps to explain visually the transformations of these two composers. From these illustrations, Beethoven had gone past the green and about to enter the yellow spectrums, while Schubert was still in earlier color, blue and about to enter green. Now let's have some explorations. Let us see what came out of Schubert's from the same color spectrum. 
So let's move it around here. And what piece do we find? Same kind of color spectrum, greenish yellowish. It is a wonder of fantasy. Now, if we pick the same color spectrum of their journey, we find these pieces of similar aim, the big features of the romanticism, that is the grand victory over a dramatic struggle. And we know for sure that this Wanderer fantasy came from his own songs of the original title, Wanderer. The song is very dark and tragic, but his fantasy is very energetic and has a glorious end. That is the heart of Romanticism. Human struggle, desolation, but glorious end. Let me now matching up their similar outcomes. Their first symphonies, including their earlier piano sonatas, and these two pieces in comparisons. Some consider Schubert as romantic composers because by the time Schubert started writing music, the style of Beethoven had moved far into romanticism. It is like placing a romantic casing this way, simply looking at the time frame between 1813 to 1828 using Beethoven's outcome as the measurement, dismissing the fact that Schubert started very much in the style of earlier Beethoven. Considering Schubert as a romantic composer is like erasing the color spectrum blue from his journey of transformations. To me, this does not do fair justice to Schubert because such view is using Beethoven as a measurement and is regarding the true fact that for the same year in comparison, Schubert did not write in the same stage as that of Beethoven. The picture to me is absolutely not like this. Schubert's first symphony is even more classical than that of Beethoven's and similarly, Schubert's sonatas from 1817 is more like that of Haydn's than Beethoven's. Having a relatively loving, caring, and strict home had amplified Schubert's nature that sought to have peace of life and simplicity. Life's order is quite clear to see for Schubert. What do you expect to live in the house of a schoolmaster? This is so contrary to Beethoven who had to survive and to fight for his life since his early childhood in the orphanage. Schubert is more similar to Mozart, spontaneous, free-spirited, while Beethoven is more like a meticulous master of calculations in constructing his music. Life's order is a complex matter for Beethoven. Schubert is a classical composer by default, and Beethoven is a romantic composer by default. To me, it does not make sense to call Beethoven a classical composer, but not Schubert. Schubert is a classical composer by default and Beethoven is romantic composers by default. What I mean by default is that they had a particular nature genetically and went through a particular environment that reinforced further their inclinations. We can continue exploring more of Schubert as a classical composer, but for now let's see how Schubert and Beethoven transform through different paths. Beethoven would naturally fulfill his natural design as a romantic being, but how about Schubert? First, songs have lyrics or story to tell. Second, Schubert was very childlike, just like children love fantasy stories, and so did Schubert, and his songs had become his playground. The subjects of his songs are often common stories, but elevated profoundly and dramatically and artistically. We will not explore about this now, but let us return to our first questions. Is Schubert a classical or romantic composer? After I convince myself that Schubert is a classical composer, I will see him and his music in a set of particular ways that I would like to share now. I have goals to achieve, I have directions, and I know I am still far from reaching that goals in performing Schubert Wanderer's Fantasy, but my goals and directions are certain and becoming clearer and clearer as I explore more and more on his music beyond what is seen on the notations. In this short lecture, I will pick just one feature to represent my point, emphasizing the importance of understanding the composer's personality in playing his music. Let us talk about texture here. The most prominent characteristic is transparency in the textures of Schubert music. This is about the clarity that is so strongly associated with the classical traditions. The next step is then to know how to achieve such a desired quality. The first one is by bringing clear chords. We can measure the balance between the top notes, the bass line, and the filler in between. So here I would bring more of the top and bass, but less the inner tone. This is generally speaking. So here, an example. Notice I give more voicing to the top lines to create lighter texture in this heavy choral passage. The 
other way to bring transparent texture is by giving the chance more for the pure tone to ring. Pure tone means the original tone without pedal. Notice I give more voicing to the pure tone also to create lighter texture in this heavy choral passage. Here in the arpeggios, I barely use pedal to create the desired transparency or clarity. Another way that I pursue is giving crisp accentuations. Swartzando means sudden accentuations and Schubert is fond of spreading Swartzandi here but they are crispier compared to more massive in those of Beethoven's. It is like stomping on one foot instead of jumping on both feet and landing with a full body weight on the floor. Here is the example from the last movement. Have I been consistent in playing what I believe and what I desired far away from home? But I do have the destinations to go home and there is a joy in the journey. Any frustration is just a delayed excitement of the discovery process. I hope this sharing inspires, motivates, and helps.